Okay, today, King Fenrod Felligand, and the only And the only thing I know about this guy is that he was the one, uh, the poem we watched regarding, uh, I'm pretty sure I've got, I hope I haven't got this mixed up. This is the guy that fought Sauron head on, went in there and was an orc. Anyway, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, follow the stream if you're on Twitch. Let's get into this reaction. Let's do it. They buried the body of Felagund upon the hilltop of his own isle, and it was clean again, and the green grave of Finrod, Finarfin's son, fairest of all the princes of the elves, remained inviolate, until the land was changed and broken, and foundered under destroying seas. But Finrod walks with Finarfin his father, beneath the trees in Eldenar. Michael nice. Vaughn and friends, Yoiston here and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today, I wanted to take some time to discuss the history of the fairest prince of the Eldar in Middle-earth's history, Finrod Felagund, a true friend of all of the Free Peoples. I'll link some related articles and videos in the description and cards Finrod as well to help in the creation okay. of today's video. Thank you all for joining me today. Let us discuss this valiant elf. Born in Eldamar in the year 1300 of the Years of the Trees, Finrod was the eldest son of Finarfin, son of Finwë, and Earwin, daughter of Ulwë. Some of his other names were Ingoldo, meaning the Noldo, Nam, meaning wisdom, Findarato, likely meaning golden hair champion, and he is also known as Felagund, Hewer of Caves, a Sindarin adaptation of the Cosmic Felic Gundu. For this is what the dwarves called him because of his creation and expansion of the kingdom of Nargothrond, an underground dwelling that we shall discuss more in a bit. Okay. He is known for his golden hair, and like the other Eldalie, he was tall and fair. He was the eldest sibling of his brothers Angrod and Aignor, as well as his youngest sister Galadriel. Oh, he was like sick. his father Finarfin, for he was both compassionate and I never knew that. and he was friends with all who shared such traits. Thus Finrod opposed the oath of Feanor and his sons, and their deeds could This bloody guy pops up every single video. I'm gonna have to watch a Feanor video one day. I can already tell it's him, right? That's Feanor. And I swear, this I might be wrong, but this is a guy who gets fights Morgoth and gets one of his hands chopped off. I think. Concerning the kinsling of the Falmari, his mother's kindred. Even though Finarfin would end up staying in Valinor and repent along with many of his followers after hearing the doom of the Noldor, Finrod would continue the journey into Middle-earth, where he would not abandon his friends and people to Morgoth the enemy. Nor would he subject his people to face the rule of Feanor or the Doom alone. But this choice to leave was not an easy one for Finrod Shirley, for he left behind the only love he would ever know, Amarie, one of the elves of the Vanyar who was not permitted to leave. Damn. Thus Finrod went into the east with his king and man. left behind the fair land of his love and early life. He walked with the rear of the host, along with the wisest of his kind, and they often looked back to see their city as they departed from Amarie. He brought with him many jewels and treasures from Tyrion, one such treasure being the ring that bore the symbol of his house and would one day be called the Ring of Farathir. Isn't that, is that, that's Aragorn's ring, I believe. I hope I'm right there. Since Finrod and his folk were at the back of the host that ultimately followed Fingulfin, they would not participate in the Kinslaying, and they would have to cross the Helcaraxe, the frozen land of the far north. But eventually the Noldor returned to Middle-earth. Finrod would come to the river Sirion, and the island of Tolsirion, where he founded the original Menas Tirith, the Tower of the Guard. In year seven of the oh, first age, okay. the council in Mithrim would be held, where the Noldor would reconcile the burning of the ships at Laskar, and their disdain for each other's houses, for Meethros would pass the high kingship to Fingulfin, his uncle. But Thingol would be disgusted, and Caranthir, son of Feanor, would insult the sons of Finarfin, which will come up later. Finrod would then likely go with his people to the Feast of Reuniting in 20 of the First Age. Thirty years after this, in 50 of the First Age, Turgon, the best friend and cousin of Finrod, visited him 
and the two journeyed southward along the Sirion River. Eventually, the two elves came to slumber along the banks of the river, and Olmo the Vala of the Seas and Waters came up the river, and gave them troubling dreams of what was to come. And these dreams beseeched them to both establish retreats, lest Morgoth should bring armies out of Angband and dominate the armies of the north. And so Finrod and Torgon oft wandered alone, seeking places of hidden strength, for they thought that they were alone in being given such dreams. These dreams would eventually lead to the creation of Nargothrond by Finrod and Gondolin by Turgon. Eventually, Finrod and Galadriel would be guests in Doriath. Finrod would be amazed at the halls of Menegroth, the city of... So, how you doing, Four? Hope you're well, my friend. So, Galadriel is his younger sister. I hope I heard that right. ...of King Thingol, and Thingol would tell his new friend Finrod of the caves near the river Narog. And Thingol had some of his elves guide Thinoldo to the caves which were to be his new kingdom. Thus Finrod fashioned his kingdom out of the caves with the help of dwarves from the Blue Mountains. But in doing so, he displaced any of the petty dwarves that had lived in those relatively unknown caverns. In return for their aid in helping him devise Nargothrond, Finrod gave treasures from Tyrion to the dwarves of the Blue Mountains, and they fashioned for him the Nalgrimor, a necklace of the jewels of Valinor, that would eventually hold a Silmaril within it. Thus Nargothrond was eventually built, and the dwarves named Finrod friend, and gave him the title Felagrund. Finrod would then give lordship over Minas Tirith to his nephew Orodreth. In living at this new place, Finrod became friends with Círdan the Shipwright, who dwelt south of Nargothrond. And then Finrod built the tower Barad Nimros, Tower of the Whitehorn, upon the Cape of the Falas, to watch against any naval attack from Morgoth that actually would never come, for he would never attack from the sea. At some point, Finrod and his people also built the artificial hill Amon Ethir, a hill of spies to look out over the plains of Talath Durna. Smart. In 60 of the First Age, the Dagwar Aglarim would commence, and the Noldor would have victory over Morgoth's forces, pushing them back into Angband. Nice, okay. The siege of Angband. Hence, there would come the Long Peace, and so, while peace yet lasted in Middle Earth, Finrod would wander, going into the green woods south of the lands of the sons of Feanor. And he even came into Assyriand, on the eastern edge of Beleriand, and befriended the Green Elves. But not all gladness could last, for the rumors of the kinsling at Aquilonde eventually reached the ears of Thingol by the messengers of Círdan. And this happened to be at a time when Finrod and his brothers Angrod and Aignor were visiting their sister Galadriel, who stayed okay. behind and lived in Doriath for her love of Celeborn. Thingol grew angry with Finrod, and asked why they came red-handed and guilty into his halls. He was also wrathful to have had the truth hidden from him by his kinsmen for so long. Finrod was troubled, for he was not responsible for any of the egregious things that the followers of Feanor did, but he did not want to single out the lords responsible for such atrocities. But his brother no Anvil spoke out against the sons of Feanor, and those that were truly guilty, for he remembered the ill words of Granthir, one of Feanor's sons, against the sons of Finarfin and Thingol himself. Angrod told Thingol what he should know of the slaying of the people of his brother Ulwe. Thingol then made the sons of Finarfin depart his halls, although they could return in the future. For while Thingol was angry of heart, he yet held friendship with the guiltless Noldor, those of the followings of Finguifin and Finarfin. Thingol expelled the language of Quenya, and thus Sindarin became the common language of the elves in Beleriand, and Quenya became the language of high elven lords and private and loremasters. And so continuing our story, after Nargothrond was full rot, the children of Finarfin gathered for a feast, and Galadriel asked Finrod why he had not taken a wife. Finrod had great foresight at that time, saying, quote, An oath I too shall swear, and must be free to fulfill it, and go into darkness. Nor shall anything of my realm endure that a son should inherit. End yeah. quote. And as we also know as well, his only love, Amarie, stayed behind in Valinor. This guy's Thus, such a Finrod boss. foresaw his doom at the hands of an oath, and also saw that Nargothrond itself and his realm would eventually fall. Thus, we move into the latter part of his tale. After more than 300 years in the First Age, Finrod joined Meefros and Meglor on a hunt, and when he grew weary of the chase, he took the dwarf road to the northern part of Assyriand, near the river Askar. That is when he heard singing in a strange tongue. Thus, he came across men, the second-born of Uluvatar, and he was the first elf of Beleriand to do so. 
Finrod listened to them sing, and he had love for these people. Thus, after they fell into slumber, he took up one of their crude harps, and he played it and sang. The peoples awoke and thought that they were yet in dreams, but eventually they communicated with Finrod, for the powers of the elves extend to the learning of languages also, and Finrod learned theirs. Look at that fast. kid! Aww. These men were of the house of Beor, who was yet their leader, and they pledged service to the house of Finarfin, for they became fast friends with Finrod, who they named Nam, and a friend of men. And so Finrod had great love for these people, and he learned of their history and culture, and he was also told of the other houses of men that were yet coming west. Eventually, the Green Elves would send word to Finrod, telling him to either have the men go back or pass through their lands, as they did not want men to stay in Osirian. And so Finrod helped them become situated in Valerian for a year, and then Beor wished to depart with and serve Finrod for the rest of his mortal years, which he did, earning his name Beor, or Vassal. Nice. The other men came over the mountains as well, and Finrod would journey to see the Secondborn from time to time. Finrod also took counsel with Thingol concerning these matters, and Thingol granted men land north of Doriath, which is where Beor's people would eventually go. Finrod would also aid Hala in securing land in Bretha from Thingol, for he brokered a deal that the men of the House of Hala should live there and guard the crossings of Taeglin from the- So correct me if I'm wrong, this guy basically stopped men from going extinct. Through, from just his generosity and kindness. That's what I'm seeing right now. Or at least good men from going extinct. I could be completely off. The enemies of the Eldar. Finrod and the woman Andraith would even have conversations about metaphysical differences Kitty! between men and elves, and the sundered fates between the two kindreds. This tale, called Athrabeth Finrod a Andraith, also tells of Andraith's love for Aignor, the brother of Finrod and Finrod's explanation of why Aignor had to refuse to return the love. Ultimately, Finrod helped ensure the great history which was to come from the Edain. Eventually, Beor the Old would pass away, and it would be the first experience of mortal death that the Eldar witnessed and had to bear. Years would pass, and eventually the Siege of Angband would be broken by Morgoth, and the Dagor Bragolok in 455 of the First Age. Thus, King Finrod came north from Nargothrond to aid his allies and kin, but he would be cut off from most of his people in the Fen of Sadak with a small company. There, the great elf would have died or would have been captured by the forces of Morgoth if not for the descendant of Beor, Barahir, and his nice. men who saved the elf and made a wall of spears about him. And so Finrod made the oath that he had foretold to Galadriel, pledging abiding friendship and aid to Barahir and his kin. And he gave Barahir his ring, which would henceforth be called the Ring of Barahir. The war would go ill for the sons of Feanor in the north, and so Kelegorm and Kurufin would go to reside in Nargothrond, the halls of their cousin. Now follows events from the tale of Beren and Luthien, which I will cover more in depth in my next two videos, but I shall tell of Finrod's final deeds within it now. In 465 of the First Age, Beren, the son of Barahir, would find his way into Nargothrond with the help of the Ring of Barahir, and he would tell of his quest to retrieve a Silmaril from the crown of Morgoth, given to him by Thingol father of his love, Luthien. Finrod would listen, and he knew that his oath and doom were both at hand, for he knew that the doom of Mandos found its way into his halls. He knew also that Kelegorm and Kurufin, sons of Feanor who had taken their accursed oath, would be loath to hear of someone else pursuing one of their Silmarils. Yeah. But nonetheless, Finrod Why are those two so salty? that he had made to Barahir and his kin. And so he went forth and told his people of his charge. As he had foreseen, Kelegorm and Kurufin spoke also of their oaths, and the war and ruin that would come to Nargothrond. And their followers listened, and were thusly driven by fear. Knowing he was forsaken by his own people, Finrod cast his crown upon the ground, and said that they may abandon their oaths to him as his people, but he will not abandon his oath. He asked then for any who remained loyal to him to join him on his quest, and ten of his friends did so. The Damn. chief of the ten picked up the crown, and asked that it be given to a steward until the king's return. That steward would be Finrod's nephew Orodreth, for Menas Tirith had been lost to Morgoth's forces in the north, and Sauron yet dwelt there. And so Finrod, Baron, and the others would all set out towards Angband, and through the powers of Finrod, they would all be disguised as orcs. There when it is! When they tried to pass by Menas Tirith, Finrod's tower of old, that was now named Tol and Gowerhoth, 
the Isle of Werewolves. Sauron doubted this band of orcs, as they went in haste and did not stop to report their deeds. So he sent to waylay them, and bring them to the Isle. And so befell the contest of Finrod and Sauron in Songs of Power. But Sauron had the mastery. Thus the disguises were broken, and Damn. they were revealed. But the names and purposes of the company were not. None of the twelve betrayed their purpose, and so they were imprisoned, and from time to time a werewolf would devour one of the elven companions. Damn. And Sauron planned to save Finrod for last, thinking that the truth of the quest laid within him and perceiving that he was some high elf lord of great power. Sauron was right on that account, for after all the others were slain and the werewolf came for Baron, Finrod used all of his power and might to burst forth from his bonds and slay the beast with hands and teeth, Hell yeah. even though it mortally wounded him also. Thus Finrod Felagund, friend of all peoples who had good hearts, passed into shadow to fulfill his oath and save Baron and his quest which would create the line of people that would save the world in more ways than one. Quote, I go now to my long rest in the timeless halls beyond the seas and the mountains of Amman. It will be long ere I am seen among the Noldor again, and it may be that we shall not meet a second time in death or life, for the fates of our kindreds are apart. Farewell. End quote. Wow. After Luthien and Huon rescued Baron and other prisoners from the Isle of Werewolves and expelled Morgoth, Finrod would be buried upon a green hill on his own isle, which was clean again. The prisoners who had been saved from the isle returned to Nargothrond and told of the death of Finrod and the heroism of a maiden who did more than the sons of Feanor. And so Finrod's people mourned their king and turned away from the Feanorians, following Orodreth as their king and Nargothrond was brought forth from its turmoil. As for Finrod himself, he would not stay within the halls of Mandos, nor was it his true end, for he was allowed resurrection. I'll have to make a video about the resurrection of elves, and my thoughts about it, but ultimately I think Finrod was so selfless and good of nature, even dying to uphold an oath that he had made to another child of Iluvatar, that he was one of the only elves to ever be brought back. Thus Finrod still walks with his father Finarfin beneath the trees of Eldemar, and he has been returned to the land where his love Amarie dwells. And so ends the tale Amari. of Finrod Felagund. I'm not gonna lie, I was quiet that whole time because that was amazing. Bro, this guy is a boss. Just one of those kind heroes, man. From the story of Finrod, we see the power of pure and compassionate friendship. Yeah. This elf is so revered and loved by all for he understood and loved the cultures of so many folk. Look at all the waifus. Elves, dwarves, <laughs> and others alike. What Chad. We should all strive to be so kind and understanding in nature. Thank you all so much for watching. Ah, oh, that was brilliant. Man like Finrod. Modern fantasy. We've got to balance elves by making them weaklings. Cinnamon Rebellion. Finrod busts his chains and kills a werewolf band. My favourite part is when Finrod has a rap battle with Sauron. <laughs> uh. Oh, there he is. Go subscribe to him, chat. Right, God damn it, Tolkien. How many times do you have to make me get attacked to an elf and then kill him? How many times do you have to break my heart and drink my tears? I'm loving these character studies, yeah, man, same. I don't know who this is. That was such a good video. Damn. GG's. GG's. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Really appreciate your time. Be sure to subscribe We're on the road to 200 subscribers and comment down below what games you want me to play or what videos you want me to react to. Thanks for being here. And don't forget, I stream daily on twitch.tv forward slash Come say hello. Take care.